Okay, let's uh, let's talk about the titration of a strong acid and strong base really quickly. That's one of our three types of titrations we need to know. Remember, strong acid, strong base, weak acid, strong base, weak base, strong acid. The weak, weak category just doesn't fly. All right, strong acid, strong base. Let's uh, let's uh, think of strong acid. How about HCl? Okay, and let's say that we've got tenth molar. HCl, and that we're going to start with 10 milliliters of the HCl in the flask or beaker. 10 milliliters is the volume, okay? Uh, we're going to react that with sodium hydroxide. We'll put that in the burette, okay? And it's going to be 0 0.20 molar, all right? So the first thing we have to do is what is the titration reaction? What is the titration reaction? Always the first step. Write the reaction. Well, we've got the HCl, our strong acid, reacting with the strong base, sodium hydroxide. Everybody can write the products of this reaction. H2O and sodium chloride. Aqueous, right? Beautiful. Nice. Now, let's clear out the spectators. We know the chloride is a spectator. We know the sodium is a spectator. So our net reaction... Again, those net reactions just clarify things for us. The net reaction is this H plus from the strong acid. Again, remember the definition of a strong acid, completely dissociated, in ionized rather. Our sodium hydroxide completely dissociated hydroxide goes to H2O. So there's our net reaction. And just to make sure everybody understands, this reaction, we can assume, goes all the way to the right because it has a large equilibrium constant. Remember, the equilibrium constant of this reaction is 1 over the Kw. So this reaction has an equilibrium constant of 10 to the 14th, which is huge. This reaction, definitely, we can treat stoichiometrically. goes all the way to the right-hand side. Right? No ice table needed. Great. Second step. Okay, what's the equivalence point? What is the equivalence point? The equivalence point is the point at which we've added just enough of the hydroxide to just react with all of the H plus that was accepted, was present. So the equivalence point is the where we've added just added just the quantity. of OH minus to react with all of the H plus that was there initially. All right? So equivalence point, important thing to understand. The equivalence point is a key. Any titration calculation we're doing, you're going to want to figure out where that equivalence point is pretty quickly. Now, you may be able to do that in your head by looking, by comparing the concentrations of the sodium hydroxide and the HCl. Again, we know the reaction happens one mole of H, H plus to OH minus. So, knowing that I have twice the molarity of the sodium hydroxide than the hydrochloric acid, you may be able to do this in head. You may be able to come up with the idea that the, equivalent, the, the, the result, the equivalence point is five milliliters. But if you can't, here's how you do it. Okay. You're asking how many milliliters of the hydroxide solution do I need to just react with 10 milliliters of the HCl solution or the H plus solution. And that H plus solution has a molarity of 0 0.10 millimoles of H plus per milliliter of H plus solution. Again, remember a millimole per milliliter is the same as a mole per liter, a little easier to work with, milliliters cancel. Um, the reaction says that one millimole of OH- minus reacts for one millimole of H+, plus. that comes from the balance equation. So millimoles of H+, plus cancel. And then finally, our source of the hydroxide, every milliliter of the hydroxide solution contains 0.2 millimoles of OH minus. Bingo. And if we work that through, okay, we work that through, we get five milliliters as our equivalence point.
Okay. Now, why is that important? Well, <clears throat> it, it sets up one boundary on our titration curve. Certain things happen before the equivalence point. Certain things happen after the equivalence point. Actually, there are four key points in any titration. Four key points. And we'll hit them all here. The f after we've gotten the equivalence point, the first one we're going to talk about is what is the initial pH. The second is what's happening before the equivalence point once we've added some, hy uh, some um, hydroxide. Three is the equivalence point itself. I misspell equivalence point. That's a single point on our curve. And then finally, what's happening when we're at a volume of added hydroxide that's greater than the equivalence point. So on any, on any titration, we need to consider these four points. We do different calculations at each point because each point represents a different situation. Initial pH before the equivalence point, equivalence point, and greater than equivalence point. Now, in this case, let's just jump to the equivalence point. When we've reached the equivalence point, I hope everybody sees that the only thing we've produced is H2O. H2O is neutral, so this is a true neutralization reaction. The pH at the equivalence point is definitely going to be equal to 7. All we have is water. Okay, Water is both an acid and a base. It's producing equal quantities of H plus OH minus. So this type of reaction is definitely a neutralization reaction. We only have neutralization when we react a strong acid and a strong base. The pH at the equivalence point for a strong acid, strong base titration will be 7. All right? Great. So we've already got one point. At 5 milliliters, we know the pH is going to be 7. If we're at less than 5 milliliters, we're in one region. If we're greater than 5 milliliters, we're at another region. If we're at 0 milliliters, we're at the initial pH. Okay. If we're between 0 and 5 milliliters, we're before the equivalence point. If we're at 5 milliliters, we're at the equivalence point. If we are greater than 5 milliliters, we are past the equivalence point for this specific reaction. So knowing that equivalence point helps you bracket your titration curve and know what to do where. All right, so let's just demonstrate. All right, so, oops, did I do that? I didn't want to do that. Hang on for a second. Okay, so, scroll down here a little bit. So let's get the initial pH. That's pretty easy here, right? The initial pH, we have a tenth molar solution of HCl. Strong acid, completely ionized. It therefore is a 0.1 molar solution of H+. So therefore, there's my concentration of H+. And therefore, my pH is going to be the negative log of that. I hope you don't need a calculator. The pH is going to be 1.00. All right? That's our starting pH. Strong acid, completely ionized. Bingo. Easy calculation there. Not really a calculation. <clears throat> All right. Now, what happens after we add... One milliliter of 0.2 molar in the OH. Well, I hope everybody knows that that's going to decrease the concentration of the H plus as the H plus reacts with the OH minus. Okay, but since it's before the equivalence point, we're still going to have some H plus left over. So my concentration of the H plus, follow me here, concentration of my H plus after the addition is going to be the amount of H plus that I started with. That's the 10 milliliters of H plus times its molarity. And again, we'll use the millimoles of H plus per milliliter. So again, volume times molarity gives me millimoles in this case. I'm subtracting from that the volume of the sodium hydroxide, 1.0 milliliters of the sodium hydroxide, times its molarity, which is 0 0.20 millimoles of OH minus per milliliter. And then, of course, from the reaction, I know that a millimole of H plus reacts for every millimole of OH minus minus. 
So there we go. That tells me how many millimoles of H plus reacted. And therefore, that calculation gives me the millimoles left. And then finally, I have to remember, I have to have concentration, not moles. So now I need to know what the total volume of the solution is. Again, these are two aqueous solutions. We'll assume that we can add the volumes together. I started with 10 milliliters. That was my initial volume of the HCl solution. I've added one milliliter of the sodium hydroxide. Therefore, the total volume in my uh, container now is 11 milliliters. If I do that calculation, my H plus concentration ends up being 0 0.078 molar. This makes sense. The hydrogen ion concentration has decreased because I've added some base, and the base has taken some of the H plus away. But since I'm at the before the equivalence point, it hasn't taken it all away. If the pH is 0 0.078, excuse me, if the hydrogen ion concentration is 0 0.078, the pH is 1.10. Notice I've added some hydroxide, I've reduced the hydrogen ion concentration, the pH has increased. That makes sense, all right? Let's try one more at that point. Let's keep that calculation in view, however, okay? Notice, if now I add two milliliters, Let's add three milliliters. Let's just skip ahead. Add three milliliters. First of all, I know I'm still in that region before the equivalence point. Okay. I've added three milliliters of my 0.2 molar sodium hydroxide. My calculation is going to look real similar. My hydrogen ion con 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 concentration is going to be the again the original milliliters of the acid that I start with times its concentration. minus the volume of the sodium hydroxide I've added, 3 milliliters, times its concentration, milliliters, again, millimoles of H plus, millimoles OH minus, okay? And now my total volume is 10 plus 3 milliliters. So as you look at that calculation, when I'm between the equivalence point, okay, the only thing that's really changing is the volume. I want to get the blue here. Is the volume of the base I've added. Everything else stays constant. You could easily program this into an Excel spreadsheet. All right. So the only difference there is that. So at three milliliters, again, when I do the calculation. At 3 milliliters, my H plus concentration is going to be reduced even more. At 3 milliliters, my hydrogen ion concentration is 0 0.039. The pH, therefore, is going to be 1.41. And again, that makes sense. The pH is moving in the right direction. If I went ahead and did that calculation at 5 milliliters, at 5 milliliters of the 0 0.20 molar uh, sodium hydroxide, do the calculation, my H plus would be equal to, excuse me, I don't want to add five milliliters. Oops, sorry, jumped ahead there, trying to get trying to do too much. We know that at five milliliters, we're at the equivalence point. All right? This is the equivalence point. pH equals seven. So notice what happens here. Okay. That pH jumps substantially, okay, at the equivalence at, at the equivalence point. The system makes a huge jump between being an acidic solution, low pH, to a basic solution. Right now, at the equivalence point, we're right in the middle, neutral. All right, see above for the discussion of that. All right, suppose we had seven milliliters. Seven milliliters now puts us where? Seven milliliter puts us so now we'll add seven milliliters of our 0 0.20 molar sodium hydroxide, all right? We are definitely past the equivalence point. At this point, the sodium hydroxide is in excess, okay? We've already consumed five milliliters of the original sodium hydroxide, so an easy way to think about this is I have two milliliters of excess sodium hydroxide. Again, it took five milliliters to get to the equivalence point. 
Therefore, I've got two milliliters of excess sodium hydroxide. First thing I'm going to do is calculate the hydroxide ion concentration. That's pretty easy to do. The hydroxide ion concentration is going to be the volume in excess of the sodium hydroxide times its molarity, 0.2 millimoles of OH minus per milliliter. So there's the mole, millimoles of hydroxide in excess. Again, I need concentration, so I need the total volume of the solution. And just like we did above, we take the starting volume, 10 milliliters, add to that the 7 milliliters that we've added for a grand total of 17 milliliters. We do that calculation, and the hydroxide ion concentration is now 0.024 molar. Be careful now. All right. Remember now we've switched to hydroxide. This is the hydroxide ion concentration. So the pOH of that solution is 1.62. That tells me the hydroxide ion concentration is relatively high, or the pH is going to be 14 minus that, or the pH is going to be 12.38. Again, notice the dramatic change in pH. Right? In the course of a a couple of milliliters, we've gone from a solution that was very acidic to a solution that was very basic. Again, that will be shown more dramatically in a moment here when I show you the titration curve. Um, do we need to do one more? Suppose I add nine milliliters of 0 0.20 molar sodium hydroxide. Same thing. Now I've got four milliliters in excess do the same constant calculation as above. The only thing that's going to change, can get that blue. The only thing that's going to change is the volume here. If I do that calculation, hydroxide ion concentration is going to equal 0 0.042 molar. The pOH is going to be 1.38 and the pH after 9 milliliters is going to be 14 minus 1.38 or 12.62. Again, notice in going from 7 milliliters to 9 milliliters, the pH is definitely increased. The magnitude of the increase, however, is not that great. Again, we're overwhelming the system with hydroxide. All right. Simple calculations there. So we've covered all four regions. Initial pH, just a weak acid problem. Equilibrium, yeah, equiv yeah, equivalence point, because we know it's a strong acid, strong base, we know the pH is equal to 7. And then we got everything. We got the pieces in the middle between 0 and the equivalence point, and then we got the excess region. So again, if I scroll down here, we'll be able to look at a picture of the titration curve. So there's our curve. Sure why we got these little marks on here. Okay. And just to dissect it a little bit more. Notice the shape. Notice the dramatic change in this region. Wow. The equivalence point is right here at pH 7. There's my equivalence point. Right at, as we predicted, a volume of 5 milliliters of sodium hydroxide added. Okay. Here's my initial pH. Here's the region in between where we were decreasing the hydrogen ion, but we were before the equivalence point. And then finally, here's the region where we had excess hydroxide. So our three regions, region number one, initial pH, region number two, we've added a little bit of, 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 of hydroxide, but haven't reached the equivalence point. The third point, the equivalence point, and then finally, the excess region. I hope that makes good sense. That's a strong acid, strong base titration. If we were to do a strong, a strong base titrated by a strong acid, I hope it makes sense to you that things would just be flipped. We'd start at a high pH, go down to a low pH. So if we were doing a strong base, say sodium hydroxide, if we switch positions, strong base titrated by strong acid, I hope everybody recognizes that this was my equivalence point, my pH here, my volume of acid, that the curve would just look like this, have a similar shape. 
All right? All right, great.